Hi everyone, this is Mike from BlueRoadHome.com with an update to this older tutorial that I did on integrating Machine 2 into Logic 10 uh, to where you can use Logic's sequencer to control Machine 2. There's been a few changes with the update to Machine 2. I'm now on version 2.6.10 of Machine 2. Uh, the software update, that's the most recent update from Native Instruments. And I recommend you update it uh, as soon as you can because it fixes some other bugs. But in doing so, they've made a few changes in the software. So most of this older video is still very relevant, but there's one change that I need to make you aware of Otherwise, it won't work properly. Let's go ahead and I'll show you what that is. So we're going to do everything like we did before. Just create a software instrument. Um, we're going to go and open machine two. Doesn't matter if you do stereo, multi-output. I'm just doing stereo for ease. If you want to route all your sounds to different channels, you can do stereo output. All of that is the same. Now, if you'll notice, check this out um, this looks a little different than what we saw before this is something new that they uh, added into machine if you'll notice um, the group here is at the bottom and up top when you load a kit uh, you'll see that there's patterns you can create your own patterns it's actually kind of a nice upgrade because you can choose between different patterns so like pattern one so that's pattern one or you can do pattern two. You can switch between them. Kind of nice, you know, and you could, this is if you were gonna use this as a standalone, you can sequence your stuff out. If you're gonna use machine two, this software as a standalone. So I think they're doing this to make it more like its own DAW, which it kind of already is, but it's becoming a little more user-friendly, I think. I still like to use Logic. So uh, in order to get all this into our Logic Sequencer, we do the same steps. Now, the one thing we have to do is uh, make sure that your A1 is selected. Right click on that or command click if you don't have a right click. Go to group MIDI batch setup, sounds to MIDI channels. Um, we want to change that to sounds to MIDI notes. Again, all that is the same from the last video there's no difference so now I can drag that into my channel and I'm gonna hit no it's gonna ask me to import the tempo I'm just gonna say no because I'm using logics tempo so now I can um, just click on this pattern here that's lit up and then you'll see down here everything disappeared because now all of these MIDI notes are corresponding to these sounds so we don't need the pattern there. Pattern is all up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it. Okay, and again, we realize it doesn't sound quite right. And that is where um, this older step has changed. It's really not that different, but it, they changed the wording. So I thought I'd show you so you don't get confused. You still go with this group selected. You still go to this little circle icon. You go up to group and then you go to input. Now in the older version of machine two, you would have a little switch and it was labeled MIDI live and you would just toggle that switch on. Uh, that is no longer here. I'm not really sure why they got rid of that, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. But now we have this uh, key mode. So all you gotta do is just come into here and then switch it to manual. And you'll notice these other uh, options come up. You really don't have to worry about anything else. If you have multiple groups, then uh, you would wanna take each group and put it on its own MIDI channel just by selecting the channel and moving it to one, two, three, or four, or whatever. I'm just using this one group for an example, so I'm just gonna use all, doesn't matter. And your MIDI start note, I always leave that on C1. Uh, that's pretty standard. So now, uh, now that we've 
change this to manual, uh, you'll notice I'll play it back. And there you have it. Um, now all these notes up here, these MIDI notes are triggering the correct sounds down here. So I can actually close that out and I can double click on the pattern here. And you can see here, I can um, go ahead and, you know, alter the MIDI notes like before. You can do whatever you like, you know, and. Not that what I did was good there. Um, you could also just delete this entirely and you could just uh, record something new. Um, I have my keyboard uh, just hooked up USB to my computer. And if I just hit record, I can play off my keyboard. So that was incredibly sloppy, but I'm just showing you that you can also uh, come in there and, and then you can add other notes and create your own patterns. You don't need to stick to any pattern or anything that you import. So there you have it. Um, Everything else is pretty much the same. It's just uh, that one step uh, I felt like I should show you guys because you might be confused um, if you just upgraded to the new machine to software and then all of a sudden you don't see that little MIDI live switch to get all the sounds uh, responding correctly. With that in mind, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. So with that, Keep creating music, keep enjoying the process. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. I try to get back to all the questions. Uh, if you like this video, rate it, subscribe. Until next time.